Imagine how useful it would be to execute Python notebooks in the browser. Well, it turns out it is possible, and it's possible with Marimo notebooks and what's called WebAssembly notebooks. And I think this is really exciting, and we're going to see an example of this in the video. And that example is basically going to allow us to determine the parameters of a normal distribution, and that's the mean and the standard deviation. So this is all running on the browser without a Python backend. And you can see the graph at the bottom dynamically updating as we change this slider. So this WebAssembly notebook is capable of basically running the code and updating everything in the notebook as the user makes changes. And you can imagine this being embedded on your blog or on some kind of educational resource. And you can put these notebooks on any kind of website that requires this kind of content. So we're going to dive in in this video and learn about this and learn a little bit about WebAssembly along the way. If you want to support the channel, check out our coffee page. And thanks very much to everyone who's contributed to this so far. It's greatly appreciated. And give the video a thumbs up if you're enjoying this content. So let's get started. So Marimo lets you execute notebooks directly in the browser without a backend executing Python. So Marimo notebooks that run entirely in the browser, these are called WebAssembly notebooks or WASM notebooks for short. And you can create WASM notebooks very easily at the Marimo online playground. We're going to have a quick look at that towards the end of the video. Now, WASM notebooks have three benefits compared to notebooks that are hosted in the traditional client server model. The first one, of course, is that it eliminates the need to install Python. Instead, they'll be running on the browser and very easily accessible. And that makes scientific computing accessible as well. Now, they also eliminate the cost and complexity of deploying backend infrastructure. So it's much easier to share notebooks if they're just embedded in a browser web page. And it also eliminates network requests to a remote Python runner. So when should you use these notebooks? They're excellent for sharing your work and quickly experimenting with code and models, as well as doing lightweight data exploration. So an example of an environment you might want to use this is in blog posts or tutorials or educational materials. Somewhere you want to share interactive examples very easily, but for notebooks that do heavy computations, you might want to use Marimo locally or on a backend. Now we can see an example. This is a browser example here. We have a notebook where we import Marimo as MO, and we have a location variable here that gets some text from the user. In this case, the default value is planet. And in the cell below, we render the markdown hello from and then the value of this particular widget. So if we change the widget from planet to earth, we get hello from earth dynamically appearing here. And the cool thing here is that the browser is directly executing this notebook and it's all embedded here within the web page. And that feature, if you're interested, is powered by Pyodide and that's a port of Python to WebAssembly. Now, what is WebAssembly itself? Now, we could do a full course on this, but I'm going to go to the Mozilla documentation. And here's a quick overview. So WebAssembly is a type of code that can be run in modern web browsers. It's a low-level assembly-like language with a compact binary format that runs with near native performances. And it provides these languages here with a compilation target so that they can be run on the web. So you don't write WebAssembly from scratch. Typically, what you do is you write the code in one of these languages, such as Rust or C, and then you compile that to WebAssembly. Now, WebAssembly is designed to run alongside JavaScript, so it works together with JavaScript. And the near native speed is the key component of why you might want to use WebAssembly. And this is particularly beneficial with computationally heavy tasks. For example, 3D modeling, image editing, or virtual reality, augmented reality, those types of things are very computationally expensive. And doing that in JavaScript, which is not the most efficient language, can cause major performance issues on browsers. WebAssembly is really good at rectifying that because it runs at that near native speed. If you're interested in more videos on WebAssembly, I'd be keen to make them on the channel if there's sufficient interest. But for now, let's just get back to Marimo Notebooks. So we're going to create a notebook now and we're going to export that to WebAssembly later in the video. So let's start by creating the notebook. Now I have Marimo installed in this Python virtual environment and we can run the Marimo edit command to create or edit notebooks. If you're interested in more on that, check out the introductory video we did. Now we're going to plot the normal distribution here. So I'm going to call this normal distribution.py and that's going to create that notebook. And we also have the notebook running at this location here. So let's open the browser and you can see that here. Now in the top cell, I'm going to bring in some imports here for some packages. We've got Marimo itself, as well as NumPy, Matplotlib, and SciPy. Now we need to install those, so we're going to click the Install button here. And that's going to install those into our local environment. Now while that's installing, I'm going to go back to the documentation. And if we go to the Packages section here, you can see that Wasm Notebooks come with many packages pre-installed, including NumPy, SciPy, Scikit-Learn, Pandas, and Matplotlib. And you can see the Pyodide documentation for a full list of those. We're installing the ones that we specified for local use only. When we export that to WASM, they're going to be installed by default. So let's go back to the notebook. We now have these packages installed. Let's create a new Python cell just below here. 
and we're going to create some sliders for the mean and the standard deviation of the normal distribution. So let's create a variable called mean slider and we're going to use the Marimo UI module and that has a slider that we can use. And let's look at the signature of this. It takes a start and a stop position and we can specify the step in between those. So let's say that the start position for the mean, that's going to be minus five and the stop position will be five and we can have a step in between of 0.1. Now we can also specify the default value. We're going to set that to zero to begin with. And we can also give that a label as well. Once we've done that, we can then output the slider by just putting it at the bottom of the cell. And you can see that here. And we can now slide between the start and stop positions of minus five and five. Now I'm gonna copy this to the line below. So that's for the mean. The second one is gonna be for the standard deviation. So we'll call that sigma slider. And the standard deviation, we're gonna have a starting value of 0.1. And let's just have a stop value of three here. And we're going to set the default value not as zero, but as one for the standard deviation. And I'm going to paste a new label in here. So it's going to be standard deviation with the sign of sigma. And we can then output the sigma slider as well. So I'm going to copy that and paste that in there. And you can see that below. So we can now adjust the standard deviation and the mean of this distribution. What we're going to do now in a new Python cell is we're going to plot the probability density function of the Gaussian or the normal distribution. And by adjusting these sliders, we're going to have that effect of moving the graph that we're going to generate. And then we're going to embed that into our browser notebook. Now, it's not too important for this video, but if you're not familiar with the normal distribution, this is essentially a bell curve distribution. And it's controlled by two variables, the mean of the distribution and the standard deviation of the distribution. And you can see some examples of the probability density function with different means and standard deviations. So for example, the green one here has a mean that's set to minus two, and you can see it's centered at minus two on this axis. So the bell curve's highest point is essentially at that mean. And the standard deviation, the larger that is, the more spread out the data is. For example, you can see this yellowish graph here has a standard deviation of five. So even though it's centered at zero, it's much wider because there's greater variance in the data. Now we've got the parameters that are in red here. That's a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. That's called the standard normal distribution. So let's go back to our notebook. We now need to plot this out in this notebook. Now in the cell below, I'm gonna copy paste some code. So we're using the NumPy linspace function here to generate 400 values along the x-axis between minus 10 and 10. And then we're getting the slider value here of the mean. So that's mean slider. We take that widget and we get the dot value property to get its current value. And the same for the sigma slider here. We get the value and that's stored in two variables. And then we're using the norm module of SciPy's PDF function. And that stands for probability density function. And we're passing the value of the mean and the sigma into that. And remember, these mean and sigma values are controlled by the slider. And the rest of this code is just some matplotlib code. So what I'm going to do is execute this and we can now see the normal distribution below. So on the x axis, we have the values between minus 10 and 10. And we currently have a bell curve here that's centered at the mean zero and it has a standard deviation of one. And you can see that means most of the data is very close to that zero point, And we have this very tall bell curve. Now the question is, if we change the slider values here, can we see the actual graph change? So I'm gonna change this just now and we can see at the bottom that that is indeed changing the graph. Now I think what I'm gonna do is change the configuration of this Marimo notebook. I want the output to be above the cell. So I'm gonna change that config just now. So we now have the cell output appearing above the cell and that's gonna make it a bit easier to see that the graph is indeed changing as we change the mean and change the standard deviation. Now notice if we change the mean, it's basically shifting the bell curve along the x-axis. So in this case, the mean is minus 3.5 and it's centered at that point on the x-axis. So now we can dynamically change the values using these sliders and that changes the probability density function that's displayed here. Now we want to create a WebAssembly notebook and publish this so that we can view it on a browser without actually having to execute Python and Marimo. So let's now see how to do that. I'm gonna go back to the documentation and we're gonna to go to this section here and all of the links are below the video. We're gonna to export to WASM HTML, so let's click this. And Marimo has an export command that we can use for this purpose. And we specify HTML WASM and then we pass in the input file for the notebook, as well as specifying an output directory. And there are two modes we can use. The first one is called run and as it says below here, this means it's a read-only notebook. And there's also an edit mode as well. And that means you can edit the notebook in the browser. So what I'm gonna do is go back to the terminal here. I'm gonna stop the server and we're gonna paste in a command that we're going to execute. So it's the Marimo export command and we specify HTML WASM. And the name of the notebook was normal distribution.py and we're specifying an output directory. And let's do this in edit mode so that we can actually edit the notebook in the browser. 
So I'm going to execute this command and that's going to generate this output directory along with some assets in that directory. So we got this message that assets were copied to the output directory and to run the exported notebook we can run the python http.server module and then we can open that URL. So let's try that out. I'm going to clear the terminal and let's go into our output directory and we're going to use python here and we're going to invoke the http.server module. That's going to start a server and note that you could easily serve this content using a production server or frameworks like Django, FastAPI and Flask. Once the server's running, we're going to go to localhost port 8000. And you can see when we go to the browser, it's loading Marimo and it's loading the notebook and dependencies. And we actually get this notebook now appearing on the browser. Now, there are some steps when you first load this, but you can see it's importing the modules. We now have the sliders below and you can see the graph of the normal distribution at the bottom. Now, if we change the mean here, you can see interactively it is updating that chart and it's shifting the mean to the left and right as we do that. And as we increase the standard deviation, you can also see the graph getting wider. So this is now an interactive page. It's running on the browser with no Python runtime behind the scenes. It's running via WebAssembly. And that's because we've exported the Marimo notebook to a WebAssembly target. And it's all running entirely in the browser. Now you can imagine how useful this might be for sharing notebooks and sharing research and allowing users to run and edit code and also interact with widgets such as these sliders here and see the page changing dynamically. This can all now be done with these WASM notebooks directly in the browser. And that could also be really useful for your blogs or if you're sharing some kind of educational content. And some other things you can do here, for example, is you can publish to the web in different ways. We can publish as GitHub pages or Cloudflare pages. So if we go to the GitHub pages section, you can publish executable notebooks to GitHub pages for free. And you do that after you've exported your notebook to a web assembly notebook. So again, you're exporting that and then you publish and you can do that using GitHub Actions. Now you can also embed WebAssembly notebooks. So let's click this embedding section. One thing you can do is embed it in an iframe and then display that on your page. And that's going to put the notebook into the context of a larger web page. And that's going to be very useful again for educational or any kind of content sharing. And it's easily accessible. It's just running in the browser. Now I want to mention the online playground that Marimo has. This lets you create and share Marimo notebooks for free without creating an account. So let's click this link here and we're going to be taken to this online playground. And it loads this here and it's got some sample code to begin with. What you can do is add your code here and then you can create a permalink. And you can use again the iframe to embed that permalink into your web page. So if we go back to these online playground documentations and go to the embedding section, you can see an example here. We have an iframe element and we then have the source pointing to the link that we got from the online playground. And you can imagine, for example, a Django or a Wagtail blog. You could very easily put these iframes into the context of your web page. So I'm really excited about this. I think it's an amazing feature. And I think there's a lot of exciting possibilities for educational content using these WASM notebooks. If you'd like to see more on this topic or on WebAssembly or Pyodide or any related topics, let me know in the comments and we can think about scheduling those in. Thanks again for watching. If you want to support the channel, check out our coffee page. We've got a link to that just below the video. And don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this content. Thanks again and we'll see you in the next video.